So far in this series we've used function based views alongside Django REST framework but in this video we're going to move on to class based views and that's where some of the real power of Django REST framework comes from. Now I've got the documentation open here and I'm going to go to the API guide and we're going to start by looking at generic views in Django REST framework. Later in the series we're also going to look at view sets but for now let's learn the core concepts of generic views. And these were developed as a shortcut for common usage patterns and they take certain common idioms and patterns found in view development and abstract them so that you can quickly write common views of data without having to repeat yourself. So the idea behind generic views is similar to that of the dry principle, don't repeat yourself. It consolidates common logic into a class and it allows you to compose bits of reusable behaviour based on those classes. Now the REST framework generic views do perform a bit of magic behind the scenes and that can be a good thing but some developers don't like that and that's why some developers seem to prefer Django Ninja. Both are different solutions but we're going to look at the class based views because they're extremely important to REST framework. I personally like them but you have to learn these patterns, you have to learn some of the magic that happens behind the scenes but we're going to start very simple in this video. Now one of the important points here is that the generic views that REST framework provides, they allow you to very quickly build API views that map closely to your database models. So if you have these common CRUD operations across your models, then these views, these generic views in REST framework are going to be very helpful. So what we're going to do is start by looking at an example. So what you do when you use generic views is you override the view and you set some class attributes. So here we have an example of a generics.listCreate view, or I should say a list create API view. That's the name of the class that's defined in the generics module of Django REST framework. And what that does is, as it says in the class name, it allows you to list out all of the instances of a particular model and it also allows you to create a new instance and store that in the database. So the model or the query set being used here is user.objects.all and the view itself is a user list view. You can call the view anything you want, it's just a Python class, but of course you should give it a name that closely corresponds to what it's actually doing. So all you need to do is override one of these classes, such as list API create view. You provide a query set and a serializer, as we've seen in previous videos, and that serializer is gonna tell the Django REST framework generic view how to take the Django models and query sets and convert them to JSON. And because we also have a create component here, it's also going to tell REST framework how to take incoming JSON data from the request body and convert that to the objects that need to be stored in the database. And we can also add other attributes like permission classes as we're going to see very soon. Now we're going to see a few of these views now and the one I'm going to start with is going to be the list API view. So we're going to go to the concrete view classes in this generics module and I'm going to look at the list API view. This is used for read only endpoints to represent a collection of model instances. Now we saw an example of this in a recent video I did on API keys in Django REST framework. That should be appearing on the screen now. But we're going to extend our examples or rather we're going to change these list views from function based views to actually use the list API view. Now some of the attributes that we're going to add, for example the query set that we're going to attach here to the product list API view, you can already see that these are defined here. So we have the query set being product.objects.all, so basically all of the products in the database. And we also have the serializer class that we're going to add to this API view as well, that's the product serializer. So if we go back to the documentation here, what I'm going to do is go to the top again and we're going to look at the example. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically follow this blueprint here and we're going to define our own class. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm going to comment this out for now. And what we're going to do is change the product list view to be a class based view that's going to use the generics from REST framework. So to start with, let's import the generics module from REST framework and we can get that from the documentation here. So from REST framework, we're importing generics. And then we're going to define a class that's going to map closely to what we have here. So rather than a user list, because we're going to return a list of products, and let's just quickly look at that API response at the slash products endpoint. And I need to run the server to do that, so let me start the server. So I've activated the virtual environment and we can now run the python manage.py run server command. And we're going to go back to the browser. And we can see we now get the list of products. So what we're going to do is create a view here and rather than a user list it's going to be called product list API view. So let's go back to views.py and I'm going to create a class here and we're going to call this class product list API view. 
Now this new class-based view is going to extend the list API view from the REST framework generics module. And then if we go back to this documentation, we're going to define a query set and a serializer class. So I'm going to copy the query set and we're going to define that. And for the product list, we want to look over all of the products in the database. So let's copy and paste this. Basically the query set is product.objects.all and then we can add a serializer class attribute and we're going to set that to the product serializer. So let me just save this and we can also add permission classes but I'm going to do that later on in the series. All we really need to set to get a list view here is the query set and the serializer class. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the URL to use this class based view rather than using the function that we had before. So let's go back to views.py and what we're going to do is change the product list view here. Instead, we're going to use the product list API view that we just created. And for class based views, we need to use the as view static function on our list API view here. And that's going to make it usable as a path. Now, once we've done this, what I'm going to do is go back to our slash products endpoint here. And now that's going to call that endpoint and the request is going to be passed to that class based view. So let's refresh this and you can see we still get back the same response, but this time it's going to use the class-based view. And you can see we've only got two lines of code here within the class-based view. So it's very easy to set up that list API endpoint using Django REST framework by adding a query set and by adding a serializer class as attributes to the list API view subclass. Now we can do something very similar actually for the product detail view. So what I'm going to do now that we've refactored this is remove the commented out product list view, the function based one. And we're going to add another class based view for the product detail page. So again, for now, let's comment out the function here and we're going to add a second class and I'm going to call this product detail API view. And that's a common convention in REST framework. You have a list view for a list of the different instances of the model. And you also have a detail view if you want to get a model by a particular parameter. And that's for a single model, not a query set. So we can do this with another generic and I'm gonna add that here. It's the generics.retrieve API view. And we can actually just copy and paste these two attributes and we're gonna add them to this. So when we try and retrieve a product by the primary key that you can see here in the URL, what it's gonna do is it's gonna search for a product with that primary key over this base query set. And again, we're using all of the products in the database for that. And again, when we convert that single product to a JSON response, we want to use the product serializer to determine how to do that. So let's save this and go back to urls.py and for the product detail endpoint, again, we're gonna change this to use our new class-based view and that's the product detail API view. And again, we're calling the as view function. And we can now save this and we can go back to our API. So we have the list of products here and this one has an ID of one. So what I'm going to do is just add that to the URL. And you can see we still get back the response for that product detail for that single product with the ID that's in the URL. And that's being done now using this product detail API view. And again, very easy to consolidate this logic into a class. And REST framework is smart enough in this case to understand how to get the primary key out of the URL and use that as the lookup for the product. So for example, if we change the ID from one to two, we should see the JSON response below here changing to a different product. And that's exactly what we see. Now, as I said, there's a bit of magic going on here because there is a primary key in the URL, but we don't have any reference to that whatsoever here in the detail API view class. So how does Django REST framework know how to actually fetch that product by its primary key? We're going to look at that now, but just to begin, I'm going to remove the commented out function. So we're going to switch that over to a class for the rest of the series. And I'm going to go back to the documentation on the generic views. So let's go back to this page here. And on this page, I'm going to go down below the examples to the API reference. And we're going to look at some of these concepts here. So the generic API view, that class extends the Django REST framework API view class, and it adds commonly required behavior for standard list and detail views. And the way that these generic concrete classes work, such as the list API view and retrieve API view that we've looked at so far, as well as views for creating, destroying, updating, and so on. What happens with each of these concrete generic views is that they use the generic API view and they combine that with one or more mixins. And you can see the list of mixins here. We're not really going to cover that. That's more advanced, but what we're going to look at just now is the attributes that are used. So the following attributes on the generic views, they control the basic view behavior. 
For example, we have the query set, and that's the query set that should be used for returning objects from that view. And typically, you either set this attribute or you're going to override a method called get query set on the generic view. Now, we've already seen query set, and later in the series, we're going to see how to use the get query set method. But we also have some other ones here, some other attributes. We've seen the serializer class, and that's used for validating and deserializing input, as well as for serializing output. But what we're going to look at now is the lookup URL quark. And we also have a lookup field here. So let's start with the lookup field actually. That's a model field that should be used for performing object lookup of individual model instances. And that defaults to the primary key of the object. So if you have an API view that has some specific lookup logic, you can override the lookup field that's going to be used when it's actually searching for that object based on the lookup URL keyword argument. And the lookup URL quark here, that's a keyword argument that should be used for object lookup. And the URL configuration that you use for your endpoint, that should include a keyword argument that corresponds to this value. And the key point is that if this is unset, it's going to default to using the same value as the lookup field. And remember, we're not using either of these, so the lookup field is going to default to the primary key. And you can see if we go back to views.py, or rather urls.py, that's actually the name of the key here. Now, if I was to change this to product ID and save this, when we go back to our API and refresh this page on the product detail page with the primary key of two here, when we refresh this, we're going to get an error. And that's that the product detail API view is expecting to be called with a URL keyword argument called primary key. So what we can do is go back here to views.py and we can actually change this value. So look up URL keyword argument. We're now going to set that to product ID. And if we save this and go back to our page here and refresh this page, you can now see that it works as it did before. But what we've done is we've changed the name of the URL keyword argument. So in urls.py, it's product ID. And that's now what we're setting here on the class. And this basically tells the retrieve API view which URL argument to use when we're looking up a product by that particular value. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the product list API view and you can see at the moment that we're returning all of the products in the database but we can actually change the base query set that's used in the API view and one example of this if we go to models.py is we might only want to return products where the stock value is greater than zero. So basically a product that's out of stock will not be returned in the list page. That could be some kind of requirement that we have for the API. Now what we could do in order to actually achieve this is we could go back to views.py and we could use the dot filter method here in the query set and we could look at the stock value and we could use the greater than modifier and only get back products where the stock is greater than zero. Now just before we do this I'm going to change it back to what it was and save this. If we go back to the slash products endpoint here we can see we get back all of the products and the stock values are all greater than zero except the one with ID of six and that's the watch. You can see the stock is set to zero there. So what I'm going to do is change this back to the filter statement where we're filtering out that value. And then if we go back to this page and refresh, you can see we only get five products instead of six. And that last one, the watch with zero in stock, is now filtered out. So that's how easy it is to change the base query set for a particular API endpoint using these generic class-based views in Django REST framework. And of course, we could change .filter to .exclude here if we wanted to have an endpoint that only returns the products that are out of stock in our store, and that would return this watch here. Now, we're going to see another method of dynamically altering the query set that we have here very soon. For example, we might want to filter things by the user that's authenticated. We can override the get query set method in order to do that, but we're not going to do that in this video. That's coming up later in the series. Now, one thing to note is that all of these generic views, they are read only. They only work with get requests. So that makes sense. We're getting a list of products or we're getting a single product by its ID. So these are get requests. In upcoming videos, we're going to see how to change data using put requests, using post requests and delete requests as well. And there are generic views for these tasks. Now, I just want to finish this video very quickly by converting the order list API view from a function to a class based view using the generic API views. So what I'm going to do is just comment this out at the moment and I'm going to scroll up and what we're going to do is copy the product list API view and I'm going to bring this down here and paste that in here and we're going to change the name of that to order list API view. Now we need to change the query set and the serializer class here. So what we're going to do for the query set is set that to what we had before in the function. So we're pasting that in here, 
order.objects.prefetch related and we're getting the items in the product. We're prefetching those and returning all orders. And the serializer class, of course, we have to change that as well to the order serializer. Now, once we've done that, we can remove the function based view and we're going to go to urls.py and we're going to reference this new view in the URL for the orders. So rather than the order list function, it's going to be the API view, the class based view. And we, of course, call the as view function. Now, once we've changed the URL, we can go back to our API and rather than slash products, we're going to go to the slash orders endpoint and you can see we get back the orders as we did before. So you can see how easy it is if we go back to views.py to take one of the models that we have in our application and create a list API view from that model just by setting a query set and a serializer class on the view. And of course, we can also use retrieve API view and set things like the URL keyword argument that's going to be used to look up the given model. This is the power of REST framework, but there are lots of ways we can customize this process. And we're going to hook into some of those later in the series. But I just want to introduce these generic views for now. And so far, we're only using read only views, the retrieve API view and also the list API view. So that's going to be all for this video. In the next video, we're going to extend this list view that we have here and we're going to add a dynamic filter and we're only going to get back the orders that belong to an authenticated user. So we're going to see how to override that get query set method and work with dynamic data that's coming in from the request using Django REST framework. So that's the next video. And after that, we're going to look at permissions in Django REST framework. And we're also going to look at some of the CRUD operations. So not only read only endpoints, but also operations that allow you to create update and delete products and orders from the database. So thanks again for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page in the description and give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying this content it would be greatly appreciated and we'll see you in the next video.